As the sun rises over New Orleans and the city comes to life. Welcome to your museum. It's a pleasure to have you today. This day belongs to George Soros. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great to see you, boss. The World War II veterans sing yes, the National Museum that honors his contributions for the first time. I'm wondering how they ever got that up there. Taking it all in. Gee. This is a return trip to New Orleans for George Soros. The first time looked a lot different. The town is just mushroom and it's beautiful. There's a lot of LCIs. Look at all of them. When I got my ship, was down in New Orleans, and I remember when I got off the ship to go to the PX set, one of my buddies was coming down the street. I didn't know who he was when I saw him. It was a young man that I went to grade school with. Frankie Safrazo. I was in the Merchant Marine during the Second World War. This trip is part of the Soaring Valor program through the Gary Sinise Foundation, a program that has brought more than 1,100 World War II veterans and their guardians to the Big Easy. There was two battle wagons there, and we were right over by the side of them. They were pounding the beach. These living librarians taking on the not always easy task of reflecting on their time served. And a lot of my buddies are gone. Now there's very few of us left. But we had a well, we really liked each, loved each other. And this is where George's Beach was. Saros, a U.S. Navy motor machinist, served on an LST, or a landing ship tank, during the D-Day invasion. He landed in Normandy, ferrying military members and supplies more than 50 times across the English Channel. One of the exhibits spurred a memory from one of those trips. When we landed and we unloaded, we were on, I was, we were on the top deck, and the German fighter plane was coming down to strafe us. Before we knew it, there was a P-47 right on his tail, and he got him. And then I looked over, and then one of our big bombers, the wing was gone. And we were yelling, bail, 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 and they did. Now in his 90s, the significance of this trip and what this museum means doesn't go unnoticed. It is priceless. And what it makes it so priceless is we want to leave it for our young generation to know what the country went through to preserve our freedom and our liberty. He plans on doing his part by sharing his story, just one puzzle piece of the big picture that has made this nation what it is. It's beautiful. I really enjoyed it. In New Orleans, Justin Hinton, News 13. Many islands lack ports or even basic infrastructure. Armed with his tablet, Harold Wellington came prepared, taking in everything the National World War II Museum had to offer. See, that, that's a gun turret right there, 20 millimeters. Whether on the ground level, you were in that channel, buddy, or several floors up. It brings, brings back memories of uh, some of the stuff that you, you've tried to forget. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's stuff that you, you uh, would never want to go through again, but still you'd You'd do it if you had to, that's for sure. The 96-year-old did it all. Gun turret up there. He served in the U.S. Army, Navy, and the Merchant Marine. Complex. That is a Liberty ship. So seeing an entire section devoted to the work he did as a mariner. That's a ship that won the war. They built over 2,000 of them. Brought up a different set of memories. But that's what I sail on most of the time. I, I was on four different, four different ones. Point where you were in the ship. Boiler room would be back here under, you know, clear down the bottom there. <laughs> Harold Wellington really was the lifeline for troops overseas, but it was a job that came with so much danger each and every day. Well, it was the Germans, uh, the uh, submarines were chasing you. A dangerous job. And we were trying to keep away from a fight instead of getting into a fight. <laughs> but one he loved. If he wasn't uh, under attack or something, it, it was one of the best jobs I've ever had in my life. And now part of that experience is on display for the thousands of visitors who walk through these halls each year. Some of them lucky enough to capture a special moment with history in the flesh. I'd like to have a picture with you, if I may. Oh, sure. Just one part of the World War II picture. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. I feel proud of these guys that are, are uh, keeping the history up and trying to pass it on to the newer generations. Sentiment shared by the curators and archivists behind the National World War II Museum. It shouldn't ever be left behind. It shouldn't be uh, forgot. In New Orleans, Justin Hinton, News 13.
Yeah. Welcome to the National World War II Museum. Thank you. It's a pleasure Thank to have you, you today. As Harold Wellington hey, George. and George Soros. Great to see you again. Oh, it's nice Welcome to, to your you. museum. It's a pleasure to have you today. Enter the National World War II Museum. I'm Harold. You're on the Iowa. Yeah, I was on the Iowa. There's another Transylvania County connection. <laughs> yeah. In the face of Tony Kaiser, the woman who takes care of all of the artifacts they're about to see. So they're from uh, Brevard, North Carolina, which is where I went to college. Brevard College is such a small kind of intimate community and Brevard as a town is the same way. It's very much like that sort of small town America that a lot of us love. It's part of why I loved going to school there. So to have people from my hometown, uh, the adopted hometown, sort of show up, it's always really nice to sort of um, show off. <laughs> and boy, did she. How the hell we got that up there? From the different types of aircraft with mannequins inside to the exhibit devoted entirely to the Merchant Marine. Just it's beautiful. I really enjoyed it. Oh, I think it's great. This is a place where everybody should come. <laughs> Trouble is, we're not here long enough. This is an alligator tank. It can go in or out of the water, and it is one of more than 250,000 artifacts in this museum alone. I do have a favorite. It's kind of a funny one, so I don't know if this is most appropriate, but one of my favorite artifacts is we have a Hitler pin cushion. And you put the pins, Hitler's kind of bent over, and you put the pins right where you think he would. Of course we had to see it. So she took us to the Arsenal of Democracy exhibit in the historic house. And sure enough, there he was. But a lot of people wanted ways to sort of show their patriotism. And there's lots of, you know, sweetheart jewelry and um, other trinkets and tokens like that in addition to war bonds and stuff that people could do to show their patriotism. And what better way than to put your sewing pins in Hitler's butt. <laughs> the Sixth Acre campus, which sits in the heart of downtown New Orleans, really has it all. And the two World War II veterans from Brevard got to see it firsthand, which is part of the museum's goal, to try and make it as accessible as possible for as many veterans as they can. What started as sort of maybe a harebrained idea in a backyard kind of has really turned into what is really a national treasure for this country to be able to show the World War II veterans appreciation for their service. Encouraging those who have the chance to visit to do so, but if they can't get to New Orleans. We just encourage people to expose their children to institutions, historic sites uh, around them so that as they travel, as they grow up, they'll be like, oh, look, there's a museum. Let's go, let's go do that. Keeping history alive. In New Orleans, Justin Hinton, News 13.